Hi, and welcome to the problem session for lecture three. In this lecture, we begin our study of calculus. It begins part two of the course. So we're gonna be differentiating. Um, we're gonna do two examples here. First, we're gonna do an example of a derivative taken from the definition of a derivative. So that is this. Call it to the, to, um, here is the limit as h goes to zero of the function evaluated at x plus h minus the function evaluated at f. So just to remind you, that's f of x, I mean y equals f of x, you get f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. What's in this case? Well, it's going to equal x plus h cubed plus 2x plus h squared minus 7x plus h minus 10. That's the f of x plus h part. Now I'll subtract out the f of x part. That's x cubed minus 2x um, squared pl uh, plus 7x minus 10. Okay, now I'm going to cancel. Well, the first term of each of these expansions is going to cancel with these terms. So let's write it out though. We get x cubed plus 3x squared h plus 3x h squared plus h cubed plus 2x squared plus 2, sorry, plus 4x h plus 2h squared minus 7x minus 7h minus 10 minus x cubed minus 2x squared plus 7x minus 10. Okay, let's start canceling in a different color. It's blue for that one. Um, so the x to the third cancels with x to the third. The 2x squared cancels with the negative 2x squared. The negative 7x cancels with the 7x. And this should be a plus 10 over here, I apologize. Boop, boop. And that cancels with that. Because it's minus, um, oh, I'm sorry, no, this is, this is a plus 10. That's a minus 10. I doubly apologize, there you go. Um, so that cancels with that. Either way, they cancel. Um, so we go through and do this, and we end up with 3x squared h plus 3xh squared um, plus h cubed plus 4xh plus 2h squared, um, and that's uh, minus 7h. Now we call we divide through this whole thing by h. There's a 1 over h out front, this whole thing, and that's all divided by h. And this is divided by h, so that's going to equal 3x squared plus 3xh plus h squared plus 4x plus 2h, that's an h, not a whatever that's supposed to be, minus 7. Now find the limit as h goes to 0, gets rid of all the h's, so we do that in the limit in red. That's gone, that's gone, and that's gone, leaving finally 3x squared plus 4x minus 7, which is the derivative of that function up top. There you go. Um, that's using first principles. In practice, you will pretty much never take a derivative from first principles because we have rules that we do in the next lecture, which you may have already gone through already. I don't know. But in practice, you won't generally do this this way. However, that said, it's good to know how to do it this way. Okay, so that's an example of this. There are more examples in the problem set. We're going to move on to partial derivatives. As a second example for this, this um, chapter, here you have a function of two variables. We'll talk much more about functions of two variables in the last part of this course. But for now, here you go. Now we need the partial derivatives of this thing. There are two possible partial derivatives. We'll do each one using from first principles again. You take a partial derivative, which looks like this. Partial f, partial x is how you read it. It's like a backwards um, d. It's a little like a, like a delta. This is a delta. That's a partial. So the little top curly part curves um, to the right for delta and um, back in itself for a partial. Um, okay, so the way to take a partial derivative, again, as we saw in the lecture, is to take the derivative with respect to the variable, holding all other variables constant. So basically, when we do partial f, partial x, we're holding all the z's constant. We're treating them as like normal constants. So we can go through and apply our definition 
as before with no real problem. So here we have um, f of x plus h comma z, so we're leaving z as a constant, minus f of x um, comma z divided by h. Here we're going to have what? We're going to have um, 2x, I'm sorry, parentheses here, 2x plus h times z, treating as a constant, plus z squared, still a constant, minus 2x plus h squared, minus the original function back again. Okay, we can go through and cancel things out. Multiplies out, we get 2xz plus 2hz plus z squared minus 2x squared um, minus 4xh minus 2h squared minus 2xz minus z squared plus 2x squared. We're going to cancel some things again. Here goes the 2x, 2xz's. Um, here go the z squareds, there go the x squareds, and that cancels everything. And this is going to equal 2hz minus 4xh minus 2h squared. Now again, this is all divided by, by h, so we need to divide by h. Just assume this is divided by h everywhere else up top. You're going to be left with 2z minus 4x minus 2h squared. Sorry, just 2h. And finally, as the limit goes to zero, um, this one goes away. So in the limit, you get the answer 2z minus 4x is the derivative with respect to, to x, the partial derivative with respect to x. We do the exact same thing for z using um, z. Um, I'm still using red here. So here again, it's the limit as h goes to zero. But now you're treating x as a constant and adding the h to z. And I'm going to do a little simpler here. So now we get um, 2x, sorry, um, z plus h plus z plus h squared minus 2x squared. This is real similar to the previous one, so I'm going to skip a bunch of steps here. Um, but basically, well, you know what, I'll just do it out. This is a problem session after all. I would have skipped steps. OK, so you do this, um, then you subtract out the rest of it. So you're subtracting out the 2xz minus the z squared plus the 2x squared. Now we'll cancel using, uh, what's the blue? Is it blue? Yeah. Um, cancel that one. And note that the this thing is z squared plus 2zh plus h squared. So we'll cancel the z squareds, and this thing is 2xz plus 2xh. So we cancel 2xz's, and we're left with um, 2xh plus 2zh plus h squared. Divide that by h, you get 2x plus 2z plus h. And in the limit, as h goes to 0, you get, and that should be a go to, rather, that you go to, as h goes to 0, you go to 2x plus 2z, which is the derivative, the partial derivative of f with respect to z. And there you go. And those are examples of, there are a few examples of how to take derivatives from, for, from first principles and how to do a partial derivative. Again, you're probably not in practice going to be doing this like this. However, it's good to know how to do it. Okay, uh, we'll be using the rules uh, much more in the next um, problem session. Thank you very much.